has this creator and designer of the universe revealed himself to us in some way that we can know him more personally. For just a tiny bit of context here, William Lane Craig has just presented the cosmological argument, which states that everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause. He then explains that that cause must be something outside of the universe, something that's spaceless, timeless, immaterial. And so now Ben is saying, okay, fine. So there's some kind of a cause behind the universe, why, why would we think that that's personal? And so here is now Dr. Craig answering that question, and I think it's it's fantastic, so let's let's dive in. So how do we get from the idea of an unmoved mover in, in, in some of the arguments that you've been making to the idea of a moral God who, who cares about us and is involved in the world? Well, it's quite right that arguments like the cosmological argument or the teleological or design argument, which we haven't talked about, don't get you the moral properties of the creator and designer of the universe. But the moral argument and the ontological argument do. Both of those lead to a being which is the moral paradigm and source of all moral value and moral obligation. And so those arguments complement the cosmological and teleological arguments by telling us something about the moral properties of the creator and designer of the universe. Now, looking at those properties, what makes that being a god of mind? What makes that, and, and what okay. makes that being constant, meaning like present now, as opposed to the, or the kind of deistic conception of a god who laid things in motion, maybe embedded moral codes within us, and then walked away? What makes God something that, that is present in the universe at the moment? This is such an important question to ask at this moment in time because our culture has a massive trend right now to believing that the universe itself maybe is basically like God. God is in everything, everything is in God, and it's just like vibrating and stuff, man. You hear this all the time. You hear this very pantheistic or panentheistic, I think is what it's called, concept that people like, I think, because it's non-specific. The other thing that's interesting is that people are very caught up and people get really hung up on this idea of how do you get down to a specific God? Why isn't it many gods? Why isn't it a pantheon? Why isn't it aliens or, or, or something else? Dr. Craig gets into talking about that it's not some immaterial force, but there's actually a necessity, logically speaking, for there to be a a, a central mind that has created matter uh, rather than matter creating matter. And so he's going to get into that here. And I think it's a, a really fantastic point that he makes. So here's what that sounds like. Okay. Now there's a couple of questions mm -hmm. there. First, with regard to why I think this is a mind, most all of the arguments that I just shared do lead to a personal, intelligent creator. The, the first argument does. The teleological or design argument leads to a cosmic intelligence that has created the world. The moral argument leads to a personal um, embodiment of moral value because persons are the source of moral value, not inanimate things. The ontological argument leads to a being who is omniscient and morally perfect and therefore is a person. So these theistic arguments don't just leave you with some kind of unmoved mover. They give you a personal creator and designer of the universe who is perfectly good. Now, some of them give you a being that is metaphysically necessary. The second version of the cosmological argument that I mentioned leads to a being who exists by a necessity of his own nature and therefore cannot fail to exist. The moral argument leads to a being who is the paradigm and source of all moral value. Now, if you believe that some moral values are necessary, which most ethicists do, that means this being is also necessary in his existence. And therefore, having demonstrated that a being like that exists, it cannot fail to be present in the world today. That means that this being also exists now. It couldn't cease to exist. Now, that still leaves open the question of deism. Has this creator and designer of the universe, perfectly good, revealed himself to us in some way that we can know him more personally? Or has he remained aloof and distant from the world that he's made? That's still an open question to talk about. Now we're gonna go into who is this personality? Who is this mind behind the universe? Has God revealed himself to humanity in any particular way? Can we know that objectively? Or is it all guesswork? Is it a pantheon? Is it up to everyone's individual personal preferences? 
Or has God himself, the creator of all things, actually broken through to time and space to reveal who he is to us? So dive in, enjoy this video next.